Let's get to this word. Let's go to the gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, Bethany most likely, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, he's so affectionate and compassionate. Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. which will not be taken from her. Y'all take your seats. Let's start here. Our welcome is warranted. Our focus is weightier. One more time. Our welcome is warranted. Our focus is weightier. I've said many times, awareness is the power to make informed decisions. At the same time, awareness without intentionality is fruitless. And so we'll say things like this when we come into his house. You're welcomed here. Y'all know I got a little bit of an issue with that. I've never been welcomed to my own house, but that's a separate issue. And so when we welcome him into the house, sometimes what happens is we welcome him into the house and then some of us are not mindful that he's still there. When you let someone into your home, typically what you would do is take them where you want them to be and then you will do one of two things. I hope that you're listening. Either you will entertain them or you will engage them. Whoa. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Watch the principle. When the word's in the house, there's a posture that follows through. <laughs> I said there's a word in the house. I said the word's in the house. And we got to understand that this doesn't only, this isn't only poignant for, for church, but it's really poignant for when he's in our house. Because that's where the word is. The word is in their house. Quick question, have you ever welcomed the word into your house and then you went and did something else? You ever welcomed the word into your room? You went to study, but then you went and started doing. You had cut out of study time. You had been praying about it. You say, Lord, I need to be more focused into my word. You are welcome here. Phone ring. That thing that you've been wanting to buy? Hold on, wait a minute. Amazon got a sale today. Lord, you understand. Y'all ain't, okay. Recognizing he's here is fruitless without staying focused. Catch this, be seated at his feet. If Mary was from our timeline, dealing with Martha or not dealing with Martha because she doesn't seem to be too perturbed by Martha because she's sitting at his feet. If Mary was sitting at Yeshua's feet in our time, she'd be like, it's giving life. 
And because she's sitting at his feet receiving life, she's not worried about whatever else is going on in the house because she's there for him. And a lot of times when you come for God, other folks will be trying other things because I don't want to just uh, beat on Martha, but other things will grab our attention. Because watch this, it's not that Martha doesn't know that Yeshua is in the house. She's the one that welcomed him. Now, let me make sure I point something out. Her name is Aramaic, and her name really points to the feminine tense of Lord, which means that she was probably the one who owned or ran the house. So it would have been custom for her to answer the door. Y'all ain't with me yet. I said it would have been custom for her to answer the door. So watch this. She did what was routine. She did what was routine. She welcomed him into the house. And sometimes we come to his house and guess what we do? The same routine. Welcome. Watch this. Let me go. Let me let me go serve. I don't know if I'm doing it right yet. Welcome. Let me go serve. Because sometimes we misplace serving. Or our perception of serving. And so Martha does what a lot of us do when guests come to our home. We start to entertain. <laughs> we even build houses now, don't we? I want a spot for, you see it on all the TV, don't you? When they had a thing, when they had the shows and stuff, right? The DIYs and a, and a home improvement. And I want a space for it. Come on, you got to do your hands like this. Say entertaining. entertaining. <laughs> you want, I hope you all hear the principle. You want a whole space. For entertaining. You want a whole space just so you can entertain your guest. And sometimes that's how we do Yeshua. Let me entertain you. Let me make sure I serve you. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Because she's looking to serve. And she's missing the point. Okay. She's looking to serve. She's missing the point. Watch this. Present values are revealed in real time. Again, present values are revealed in real time. Truth be told, we had, we've had, if we be honest, we've had many moments like Martha. We've had many moments like Martha in God's house and our own. Sometimes we came to the place intending to welcome God, if you will, but then we went, our mind, watch this, we sat there, but our mind went somewhere else. I've seen sometimes being in this position, I'm going to tell y'all the truth, being up here and preaching sometimes, and let me just take a quick side note, quick detour, I promise I'm going to get back on point. Look, 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 if you're still dealing with a spirit of rejection, it's going to be hard for you to preach. What do you mean by that? You could be pouring out your heart and folks be like this, as if I can't see you. I ain't paying attention to you, but I can see you. You hear what I'm saying? I don't. I, I I preach to people, not for them. I preach for an audience of one. If I please him, I'm good. Now that doesn't give me a license to just be reckless. That's not what I'm saying. But I preach to please him. And a lot of times, what happens is when folks ain't reacting, and y'all y'all don't y'all don't really see me solicit too many amens, do you? You know why? Because either you're gonna do it or you're not. I got to I got to I got to make sure that I'm doing watch this my part. Somebody say that part. I got to make sure I'm doing my part. I got to make sure that my attention, my focus is on him and not on anyone else. Y'all know how I feel about else. Yeah, for the sake of folks that ain't heard me talk about this, else is a four letter word in the kingdom. <laughs> Oh, you know, when we want to serve someone else, do something else other than what he told us. Yeah, that else. Can 
Catch this. Posture reveals priorities. Posture reveals priorities. Posture can also reveal having alignment or needing adjustment. You ever been around your children or whatever have you, and you're talking to them and they start slouching? What do you say? Sit up. I'm talking about when it's serious. I ain't talking about when y'all relax. When it's serious and you need to talk to them, sit up when I'm talking to you. And what do they do? They correct. They. Why did my posture change the way that I was? Okay. Why did my posture change the way that I was receiving? Because it matters. The posture, our posture matters in, uh, in the realm of reception. It's not physical. It's spiritual. And right now, watch this. Mary has the right spiritual posture. But Martha... She's postured to entertain. Mary's postured to engage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mary's postured to engage. Martha's postured to entertain. Crazy thing is, Martha, I'm going to get to it. Martha thinks she's right. I'll get there in a little bit. But present values are revealed in real time. Postures reveal, posture reveals priorities. Do we have alignment or do we need adjustment? Get this, Mary exemplifies a posture of reverence, readiness, and reception. So watch this, not only because, see, when Martha hits the door, she has reverence. She welcomes him in. She's being hospitable. But she doesn't hold a position of readiness. She has a position, a moment of reverence. But she doesn't hold a position of reverence. She has it for a moment. She doesn't hold it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? She doesn't have a posture. She has the reverence, rather, but she doesn't have a posture. She doesn't retain a posture of readiness. She certainly doesn't retain the posture of reception. What do I mean, reverence, readiness, and reception? Reverence at his feet. By the way, this is the position of the disciple. The disciple sits at his feet. Oh, my goodness. I said the disciple sits at his feet. The disciple makes sure that they're always in a position to look up. If I sit at his feet, I'm always in a, watch this, automatic, I know it's a natural thing, but I hope you hear me by the Spirit. If I sit at his feet, I'm always in a position to, I'm always in a position to realize who's above me, whose presence I'm in. Reverence at his feet, watch this, readiness for his doctrine. Readiness for his doctrine, reception of his goodness. How do I know that she's receiving his goodness because he said so? I'll get to that. Here's the thing. Martha, Martha rather, welcomed him, but at some point, say at some point, point. she withdrew. Because there's a little word in the text that we could possibly overlook because the word said who also sat at Yeshua's feet. Now, whether that had been past tense or present tense, at some point, she knew how to sit at his feet, but that's not where she remained. She withdrew. Say she withdrew. By the way, when I tell you to say something, I'm trying to get it to log into your mind so that you hold on to it for later. Say she withdrew. Mm-hmm. Don't miss this. Time is an investment best made with discernment. Yeah, let that sit there for a little bit. I said time is an investment best made with discernment. The words here, we got time today. 
Because, see, sometimes when the word shows up, we don't make time. Sometimes God is saying something to you. Anybody ever caught something in the spirit? You was doing what you were supposed to be doing that day. But then something got a hold of you, and then you went and did something else. You ain't even get to the you ain't even get to the good part. Oh yes, it did. You so you you supposed to be right here, but you went. It was the Holy Ghost. Huh? You got to scoop when you do that. You got, yeah, but <laughs> it, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the Holy Ghost. In this case, it was the Word. And the Word was in the house. I don't know. If I, I said the word was in the house, but Martha's mind went elsewhere because she welcomed him because welcoming him or anybody would have been routine. It would have been the hospitable thing to do. It would have been the decent thing to do. But the question is, was there any discernment with it? And a lot of times we do things out of routine instead of with discernment. And what happens when we get into a routine, sometimes our discernment gets like, you, can, you ain't got to be honest with me because I'm going to talk about it anyway. When you know what you're supposed to do, you know you're supposed to show up. You know you're supposed to dress a certain way. You know you're supposed to act a certain way. Even though you can't stand your neighbor, that's why you don't want to talk to him. You act, hey, neighbor. So we go through routines, and sometimes we lax, or get lax, that's a military term. We get lax on discernment, because I've done this before. This ain't the first time that they've encountered him. This ain't the first time that they've seen him. They know him. This is a place that he comes to often. (laughs) I got to hit that point one more time. This is a place he comes to. And sometimes when we have, thank you, Holy Ghost, sometimes when we have access, we lose interest. When we have access, sometimes we become too common. He'll be here another day. I'll hear what he has to say the next time. I think I've heard that parable before. I think I've heard that scripture before. I think I heard that word before. Let me go and do something. Let me do something else. Concentration is conducive for continuation. One more time. Concentration is conducive for continuation. Two things. One, there's an enduring difference between engagement and entertainment. Two, attendance and attention are not synonymous. Mary chooses to engage. Martha efforts to entertain. To engage means to occupy. When I saw that, when I almost lost my mind, somebody said, we occupied. occupied. Not preoccupied. You see the difference? So it means to occupy, and it involves our interest. It means to occupy, and it involves our interest. Now, to entertain, in this case, means to consider an idea. And what happened is, Martha's considering her own ideas. That's what entertainment, okay, I say that's what entertainment in the text is. She's considering her own idea, and some of us entertain in church because we have our own ideas. And truth be told, some of us even entertain in our house because we have our own ideas. The space of entertainment and so how many of us oh God how many of us have looked for a home for entertainment but didn't look for a home for engagement we want to be able to entertain folks we wanted a whole space to entertain folks that only visit 
<laughs> we want a whole space to entertain folks that only visit, that's only coming over because you got something on the table. God help my soul. I said, you want a whole space for entertainment, but you can't cut out 30 minutes of study. You can't cut out a place by your bedside to pray, but you got a space for entertainment. We do this. I'm not pointing fingers. We do this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because we love to get on Martha, don't we? Oh, Martha, Martha. Martha was doing the same stuff that you and I do every day. I had stuff to do. I meant to study today, but I had stuff to do. Y'all ain't never... I do it tomorrow. You don't even say tomorrow correctly. Y'all do it tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow came and tomorrow turned into tomorrow. And tomorrow came and tomorrow turned into tomorrow. How many of y'all can be honest that your tomorrow done turned into next year? No, you didn't say it. I'm saying that's what happened. You didn't, you didn't say I'll do it next year. It's just by the time you got to Maybe y'all ain't did it, I have. I'll do it. I, I'll get to it eventually. Maybe this ain't y'all. Maybe I'm talking to myself. Well, y'all pray for me then. Oh, yeah, he ain't what I'm saying. And so, and so, so Mary chooses to engage Martha efforts to entertain Stay with me. Attention is being present. Attendance is being there. And some of us are just there. We ain't present. We just there. You can be honest with me. How many of us have showed up to somebody else's house and then we just turned our brain? We, went, we were just waiting to go home. Y'all ain't never? Y'all ain't? Y'all ain't never? Y'all ain't? Okay. You done drove all the way over there and the minute you sit down, man. I'll be here for about 30 minutes. Y'all ain't, cause y'all ain't gotta be real with me. It's okay. You ain't never sat down and you already set a time marker in your head. They ain't said nothing to you. Right? Left. They you done said not that you had anywhere to, cause what you gonna go home and do? Come on now. It's the weekend. You ain't got nothing else to do. What you gonna do? You gonna go home, sit down, and do nothing. But I I gotta I gotta go. I got to go. I got stuff at the house to do. Like what? You going to go home and go to sleep? You going to sit in their you going to sit at their house and go to sleep? <laughs> the level of appreciation is big different. Say it's big different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a big difference. It's big different. It's big yeah, it's big different. Let's keep going. Mary's seated. <laughs> Martha serving. In most situations, we would think Martha was doing the good part. How you going to sit down while I'm... See, y'all act like y'all ain't being Martha. How you going to sit down while I'm serving? Thank you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How you going to sit down? I'm I'm the one here serving. Mary sat at the master's feet. Martha left to her many feet. See, some of us think that we're at his feet, at his feet, and we're just at our feet. One more time. Uh, Some of us think, some of us know that we're at his feet. Feet, and some of us are just up to our feet, doing what we think needs to get done. We're entertaining our own ideas. Listen close. Distractions entertain disorder. Distractions entertain disorder. Be watchful because distraction looks like dedication. This one almost made me lose my mind. I say, distraction looks like dedication. You ever seen somebody doing a whole bunch of nothing? 
Can you be honest with me? Can you be honest with me and admit that sometimes you've been busy doing a whole bunch of nothing? You can't focus because you just here, there, everywhere. Meanwhile, the words in the house. I got to run and go do this. I got to run and go do that. But, but the words in the house. Hold on. Didn't you welcome him in here? Didn't you know he was present? You know how we get in church. He's here. He's here. He's here. Okay, now what? Do, does he have our attention? Does he have our attention or are we waiting for the next thing? You're waiting for the high spot, then, then you're just going to be waiting because I don't know when it's coming. I don't, I don't drive. There's going to be no keys to cue you in to when I'm hitting the, it, whenever it ha- if it happens, we just talking today. See, see that's why we need the keys because we want to be entertained. They're not evil. They're not wrong. I'm just saying that's why we need all that stuff to to entertain us so we can get these ideas because ain't nobody preaching unless they inflect. (gasps) They just hurt my throat. I can't do it too much. Maybe somebody else got the grace for it. They just hurt my throat. I'm just, I can't. I'm not, I'm not, I I can't do it. I got a good friend who talks to me on the phone like that. So some people, that's just the way that they are. If I call my good friend down to my admitted, uh, Pastor Tim Jones, he, he talk like that. Brother Joe, you know I was. <gasps> How's your family? <gasps> Joe, they... <laughs> that's him. So it's not an act for him. Some folks, it's just an act. I said what I said. Let me move on. Get this, Martha's a clear, God help me, Martha's a clear example of when distraction attempts to set order. Yeah, that's the one that got my attention too. I said, she's distracted trying to set order. This is what happens in our house and this is what happens in his house. We distracted, and the distracted ones are trying to set order, and then the distracted ones are trying to sick Jesus on us. No, okay. The distracted, she didn't try to sick Jesus on her. Get them, Jesus! They ain't serving. Get them, Jesus! She's not serving. She's sitting. Get her! You tell her what's right. I ain't going to talk to her because you here, but you get her. Getting on my nerve. I don't know if she was acting all like that. I'm just saying. Every time he come in the house, all you want to do is sit at his feet. And? A lot of times, watch this, and I'm only talking about what I'm talking about. Sometimes I'll be like, I just want to do something. Well, make sure that when you want to do something, the first thing that you want to do is sit at his feet. Because when we talk about being in ministry, I don't want to just sit there. You don't? Why? I'm not saying to not be active in the church. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm saying, but why is that such a, 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 an off thing? You know why? Because a lot of us just want to be busy. A lot of us want to be busy doing stuff. Watch this. Other things that may need to get done at some point, but not the thing that needs to be attended to at this point. There's a difference between this point and that point. I mean, maybe that's too flat, maybe that's too simple, but do you get what I'm saying? Okay. Her focus was actually a distraction. In the text, and this is why, one of the reasons why this scripture is so uh, talked about and, and so utilized, though it may be unbeknownst to those who use it. In the text, distracted means drawn away. Here's the interesting thing I found. This is the only usage of that word in the whole Bible. It's the only time this word is used. I'm not going to slay the Greek today. I'm not going to do it. 
But this is the only time the Greek word here is used. And so this distraction is different. She's drawn away. Hmm. Follow me here. Sometimes entertainment looks to interrupt engagement. That's layered. Let me say it one more time. Entertainment sometimes looks to interrupt engagement. Some of us come to really engage with God, but then we're distracted by entertainment. Everybody that come to church ain't there for the entertainment. I don't believe that. Everybody ain't there so they can watch their kid in the play. Everybody ain't there to hear they, 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 they cousin sing. Everybody didn't come for that. You know that's how you get a church field. Put on a program. Put on a program. We need dancers. We need people that do poetry. We need people that do mom. I still don't get it. Um, um, we need people that do. Maybe somebody else blessed by that. I'm just saying. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so you're doing all this stuff, and now people are entertain and that's how we keep some folks or think that we're keeping some folks attention by entertaining them and doing a whole bunch of stuff you know I can tell you the church done got into the entertainment business man now look we got the we got to focus in on the pool on, on the stage the pulpit whatever it is nowadays we got the lights focused in we turn all the lights down you say ain't no lights down the hill I'm just talking about what I'm talking about I'm not saying if your church lights are down that you evil I'm talking about what I'm talking about I'm saying, but we draw all the lights down, right? And they say it's for focus. It's for some folks to go to sleep. But um, some of y'all go to sleep in the light. Don't don't be don't be look don't don't be doing that. It's bright as all get out of here. I ain't been that long yet. But we do all these things. We got the smoke. We got the fog machine, we got the wind machine, we got to have the props, so we got to have the this, and we have to do all these things. I'm not demonizing them. I'm saying, what is their place? And why they made a priority? And why now our mark of excellence, our mark of excellence is how, uh, uh, how productive it looks. How professional, thank you, Holy Ghost. I say, how professional it looks. Not how excellent it behaves. We want the look of excellence, not the behavior. Some of us. But at some point, we have to get to the point in our mindset that, that Martha, we ain't here for you. <laughs> Distraction, we ain't here for you. We here for him. Somebody say, I'm here for him. Don't miss this. We must be watchful so that routine doesn't displace right relationship. Listen real close. Undue burdens lead to unmerited blame. I said undue burdens lead to unmerited blame. What do you mean by that? She begins to blame Mary for not helping her because she's taking on burdens that she doesn't need to. And some of us have taken on burdens that we don't need to, but we want to blame somebody. And you're like, God, get them to help me. They're supposed to be helping me. Watch this. In ministry. But did God take you to t tell you to take that one on? I got to do everything by myself. Well, if you got to do everything by yourself, what was I in this conversation? Martha's like, I got to do it. My This is how she's saying, I got to do it myself. And I wanted the Lord's like, well, well that, see, that's the problem. You trying to do it yourself. Where was I? If I wasn't where you were, why were you there? If I if he's not where we are, why are we why are we there? When the disciples come on, let me take you to another story. You know when the disciples on the on the ship and they all frantic and, and Jesus is asleep, you know what they should have been like? Man, let me look this wood look mighty comfortable. Man, look, that man, he is asleep. He resting good. If he sleep. It must be nap time. But instead of resting, we get restless. 
He's saying rest and we're restless. He's saying listen, but we just want to be busy. He's got a he's he's giving us a word, but we're worried. Don't look at Martha. Because we be acting like it sometimes. Martha's, Martha's like, Lord, I'm over here by myself. You know she was dramatic. Y'all ain't got to play. Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I'm over here by myself. I got to do this ministry all by myself. <laughs> I got to clean this house all by myself. <laughs> I got to serve all these people by myself. Where am I? But, but where am I? Gently, the Lord says, you're out of order. He does it very gently. You know how he tells her you're out of, how she's out of order? Martha? Martha. He being so compassionate with it. <laughs> Lady, you so out of order, it's crazy. Martha? This is, this is how we speak the truth in love. Because he's really like, you out of order. But what does he say? Martha? Martha. You worried about a whole bunch of stuff. Watch this. When he says you're worried about many things, that means her mind wasn't only on what she thought she had to do. He said you worried about many things. It ain't even about entertaining me. It's about entertaining all that other stuff you got in your head. And the reason why we can't focus and engage with him is a lot of times because we got too much other stuff going on in our head. We want to do this, that, and other instead of being like the words. Okay. There's a word, the words in the house. Paul said this, Paul said this, what shall separate us? Death, life, angels, principalities, powers, hmm? height, death, present, future, things present, things to come, future, or any other creature. What does Paul say? Paul says, nothing can separate us from the love of God. We need to act to that distraction. What can separate us from the love of God? Distraction. What can separate us from the word of God? Distraction. What can separate us from being present? Distraction. She thinks she's dedicated. She's actually distracted. And she thinks, I know how I can say she thinks she's dedicated, because she goes to the master and tries to have the master to correct his servant. <laughs> she's like, correct your servant. Your servant's sitting. I'm the servant who's serving. Here's another little thing that you can take this one with you if you want to. It's interesting how people feel entitled to your time. You supposed to be doing this. Says who? You? Especially when we know we are in not just the right position, but we have the right posture. Come this way. Worth is determined by personal regard. Worth is determined by personal regard. Get this. The worth of our welcoming the Lord is proven by our interest in his word. Nothing else. The worth of our welcoming, we can welcome him to our house or his house all we like. We can, I'm going to say it. We can let all the dancing, all the singing, all that wonderful stuff entertain us. But if we didn't come for the word, I didn't come here for you. I came here for the word. Now watch this. The word can come through the person that's singing. The word can come through the person that's exhorting. I'm not limiting the word to the preacher. That's not what I'm doing. I'm saying, what are we here for? Are we here to engage or are we here to be entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Preach, gladiator. (laughs) 
I will. Worth is determined by personal regard. And what, what's worth to you? Can't nobody stop you from paying attention to what's worth to you. When you enter something, you locked in and don't matter what else is going on. I'm talking about when it's worth it to you. You locked in. It doesn't matter what it is. When it's worth it to you, somebody else will be like, that's not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth it to you. But to me, it's worth it. Somebody say, to me, this is worth it. Say, to me, his word is worth it. One more thing. Say, his word is worth my time. You know, if we had worth in his time, he would give it to us. <sighs> Both his word and his time. I said many times we actively attend to what we value. Mary's posture reveals her present and persistent value for the Lord's person. His presence, his precepts, and his pronouncements. She's there for whatever he has to say. We don't even know what he says. Watch this because it's between him and... We don't even know what... We don't even... God help my soul. We don't even know what he says to her. I just know it's worth it to her. I don't know what he said to... But I know what he says to me because I said that it's... And sometimes you'll see some people about to lose their mind over a word. And then you'll see some people like this. Why? Because it's what's worth it to. And when we start valuing the word, whenever they open up, I don't care if they open up, I Obadiah. Boy, look at here. Obadiah is real hard to find. Boy, he be, ooh. It's one chapter. It's one. It's like, whoo, this, this one too? Okay. It don't matter what word it is. I value his Word, because I'm here for the, let me go back over here. The Messiah's presence must retain presidents. The Messiah's presence must retain presidents. Sometimes we let it take presidents, and that's an error on our part. We need to maintain it. Do you understand the difference? Because sometimes we're having to switch and that's called for. It's called repentance. It's called alignment. But what happens when we start celebrating that I didn't break this season? What happens when we start celebrating I was focused this season? What happens when it's like, like I didn't let all these distractions get to me? I was focused on what he had to say so then I could go do what I needed to do. We want to do what we want to do or do what we think we need to do before we've heard what he has to say. Perhaps there was something that Mary needed to do, but before she needed to do it, she wanted to hear what he had to say first. Perhaps there's something that you need to do, but maybe you ought to hear what he has to say first. His, the Messiah's presence must retain presidents, his precepts, his pronouncements, and his prophecies. The question is, when the words in the house, are we postured for his presence? We got to realize it's a blessing just to be in his presence. But the real blessing is to be present in his presence. It's a blessing to be in his presence. But the real blessing is when we're present in his presence. The Lord says one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Part in the text is used five times in the New Testament. Each time it points to a marked distinction. One time Paul uses it to, to, to speak about partakers. But every time that this word is used, it's a marked distinction. So there's a distinction between engagement and entertainment. Somebody say that part. There's a distinct, there's a marked difference between attention and attendance. Somebody say that part. There's 
uh, uh, there's a difference between distraction and discernment. Say that part. And some of us think we got discernment because we think we know what's going on because there's so much to do. Meanwhile, somebody's sitting still and you think they're doing nothing and they're getting everything they need. They're not doing anything. Where are they? Are they next to his feet? You mad because your feet tired. Sit down. Have a, have a seat, but make sure it's at his feet. The good part Mary has is salvific. Whenever Yeshua is speaking, it's a salvific word. What do you mean salvific word? I mean it's a word of salvation. Watch this, both presently and to come. And what we have to understand is there's, there's levels of salvation. And so salvation was available before you and I got here. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So salvation was here before we got here. So watch this. Salvation was ready for me. I would I would I would have got up and yelled at somebody on that one. I said, I said, salvation was ready for me when I got here. I had to get ready for it. I had to receive it. It was available for me before I got here. I had to get ready for it, right? And so it's ready before we get here, and then it's ready once we receive it. And once we receive it, when we truly receive it, watch this, not just say it. Because there's a whole lot of folks saying they're saved, and they ain't. You being judgmental, I'm saying what I'm saying. A whole bunch of folks talking about salvation, and a lot of us look at salvation like once we say, you know what I'm saying, once we say there's nothing else to do. Why, why, why does he continually give his disciples something to, after, watch this, he gives them something to do after he gives them his word. They hear his, they, they go, he sends them out two by two, and they come back and they do what? Sit at his feet. So it's not that, watch this, I know it's not works-based, but it's certainly not works-deficient. It's faith and works. It's a team. It's an agreement. You can't have one without the other. You can't be like, you know, I have faith in God. So what you doing? I'm serving. Some of y'all caught that. So what are you doing? I'm serving. There's a difference between thinking that you're serving when you're really just busy. I'm serving. Doing what? Well, 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 come on, let me come to another chapter real quick. Didn't I prophesy in your name? You were serving. We prophesied in your name. You were serving. Depart from me. You worker of a, you never sat at my feet. You was busy serving. So you thought. Because distraction looks like dedication. Didn't we? They're doing something similar to what Martha did. They're trying to show God their resume. God, didn't you see me? You don't see me over here serving? You don't see me over here serving? All this work that I'm doing? And there's Mary. Here's the interesting thing. I got to go watch this. Here's the interesting thing. When you're in right standing with God, you don't have to say nothing. When you're in right standing with God, you don't have to defend yourself. See, she's not in right standing. That's why she's trying to defend herself. She don't even know that she's out of order. This is how out of order she is. She don't even know she's malfunctioning. She don't even know. Because she's like, Mary need to. And God's like, no, you need to. 
So before you start thinking about what somebody else needs to do, <laughs> when's the last time you sat at his feet? Because she, she thinks that she's right and she's off. Distraction, trying to set order, is happening more than we give credence to. And so now we got to have all these clubs. We got to have all these auxiliaries. I'm talking about what I'm talking about. I ain't scared of none of y'all. <laughs> We got to have all these, we got all these auxiliaries to keep folks busy. And we busy doing what? When's the last time you, I've been here, I've been there, I've been everywhere, except at his, let me sit at his feet, let me soak in some word. The good part Mary has is salvific. I said it was here before us, it's here for us, and it's here for us. <laughs> it was here before us, it's here for us, and it's here for us. Because salvation in its fullness is realized in eternity. Say amen, church. Amen. Go ahead, check your Bible. That's right. Mm-hmm. The fullness of it is not in this body. It's in the glorified one. When, when corruption takes off cor and puts on incorrupt, when that happens, yeah, that. When we're not, watch this, when we're not all asleep, but we're all changed, yeah, that one. Say that part. Yeah, that part. That part. That part. One thing is needed. Mary chose that good part, which would not be taken away from her. It's a sustaining word. And that's what we need to receive. We need to receive a sustaining word. One, not one that entertains us. One that engages us. One that makes us say, let me make sure when I have the privilege of being in his presence, that I'm present too. When I have the privilege of being in his presence, when I open my word, I have the privilege of being in his presence. When I bow my head for this cause, I, bow, I, I am privileged to be in your... Now let me be present. Don't let me start praying and then get up halfway through and I ain't even finished. Watch this. Don't let me go into prayer and not be silent. When's the last time you was quiet in prayer? How you gonna hear from him if you always running him? Lord, tell me, Lord, tell me, Lord, tell me, Lord, like if you would hush. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you would just wait, if you would just, really, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really ready to say something, but, you know, he ain't rude. He'd be right there, like, all right, are you done? <laughs> are you done? One thing is needful. One thing is needful. Somebody say that part. that part. What part? That salvific part. Watch this. That sacred part. Until the word becomes sacred to us again, we're going to miss that part. Until we realize that the word is our saving grace, we're going to be missing that part. Until we realize that his word sustains us. We're going to be missing that part. But Martha has now had the opportunity to recalibrate. Because the Lord has gracefully told her, Martha, Martha, let me say it this way. Church, church, you worried about too much stuff. Church, church, we worried about too much stuff. We got too much going on. What we need to do is sit at before you do the next thing, before you make your next business transaction, before you decide to be an entrepreneur, why don't you sit? Somebody say that part. Now give God praise. This is the message I want you to receive. 
Somebody say that part. Now you, you got to get with it. You got to do your homework. Say that part. What part? The salvific part. The sacred part. The sustaining part. Somebody say that part. <laughs> Not entertainment. Engagement. Not distraction. Discernment. Say that part. Give them another hand clap of praise.